Hi, this is Richard Dykeman. We're doing a office hours session of Diabetes University where people that have written in with questions get to have them answered by Dr. Bernstein, who we're here with right now. So thanks for doing this, Dr. B. Oh, my, gl I'm glad to be here. All right. Thanks for producing this. Ready to get started? Yeah, I should make a little warning, namely that I'm answering personal questions about humans uh, who have a medical history, who have a body with things that one can look at when you examine them. And these are people sight unseen. I don't know them. So right. my answers are guesses. They're not absolute uh, answers or advices, but uh, they have good, probably good likelihood of being reasonable responses. The Diabetes Solution is a book that gives the basic step-by-step -step methods for keeping blood sugars normal, but I don't cover everything. There must be things that I left out that I forgot about, and these come up in the questions that have been asked subsequently well, to the printing of the book. I mean, the book, how, how big is the book? It's almost, it seems like it's, it's almost... 500 pages. Okay, you're leaving and, stuff out still. Uh, it would have been more, I think it's 540. The, the publisher limited the number of pages, so I couldn't say everything I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready to start the questions? Yes, sir. Okay, the, the first question is about um, a boy who's nine. And his father and mother are concerned because his total cholesterol levels, I guess he has written here that the, the cholesterol levels are around 400. And um, what does that mean? And what, what is his course of action that you recommend? Well, these uh, parents probably have not read about the cholesterol myth or the fact that... Uh, cholesterol per se is no longer considered a risk factor for heart disease. In fact, uh, cholesterol is necessary for existence. Many uh, of the uh, substances of the body are made of cholesterol or derived from cholesterol. So cholesterol is essential for life and uh, it's hard to, you have to really strain yourself to find uh, a modern study that uh, blames cholesterol for any of our illnesses. Mm. So uh, we don't look at it anymore. Now, I say we, I'm talking about uh, modern, up-to-date physicians. Uh, even the um, uh, U.S. government's guideline, dietary guidelines, which... Uh, criticized cholesterol, told you not to eat eggs and foods containing cholesterol. Uh, this has all been withdrawn because we now call it the cholesterol myth. If you're looking for heart attack risk, you'd be wiser to look at uh, markers of inflammation, of which there are many. Some of the more common ones that are measured are C-reactive protein, um, fibrinogen, homocysteine. Um, uh, there are a lot more, and we've discussed these in a prior video. Uh, and uh, in my experience, as a matter of fact, uh, lipoprotein small a in people whom I've seen has the strongest correlation with heart disease uh, if it's elevated. So uh, these are not involved with cholesterol and stop looking at cholesterol. I don't measure my own cholesterol. Um, there's another uh, study that we recommend for people who are worried about heart disease uh, called oxidized LDL. And the reason I recommend that is because when uh, these uh, plaques were found on the aortas, of young men killed during the Korean War, uh, they were not LDL or cholesterol plaques. They were oxidized LDL plaques. And uh, uh, for that reason, and that's what we find in real human cadavers. And uh, we know, for example, 
that high blood sugars increase uh, the rate of formation of oxidized LDL and uh, also increase the rate of formation of glycosylated LDL, which is only measured in research studies. You can't get it commercially yet. Uh, but the various reef of, uh, risk factors, including inflammation, uh, tend to be higher in diabetics and also in people with low thyroid function. Uh, so uh, the game plan is always to control the blood sugar because that's the major underlying factor. There are also imaging studies that we've gone into in other videos uh, that uh, uh, I use on my patients before giving them a, a strenuous cardiovascular exercise program. Mm -hmm. But that's basically the picture. You, you don't waste your time looking at cholesterol. So, but this, this guy might want to check his uh... Is free T3 or... Uh, yeah, I think the hypothyroidism, especially defects in the conversion of T4 to T3, which we talk about in the thyroid video, uh, are so common amongst diabetics. Uh, almost all of my diabetics have uh, low, t low free T3 uh, before I see them. Uh, it should be a routine thing right. to check in diabetics. And if the patient, uh, once their blood sugars are controlled, has normal T4 and T4, T3 values, these are thyroid tests, um, you could probably leave them alone or you might want to check it every five years. Uh, but if you're treating them, you have to check it more frequently, okay, probably several good. times a year. Five years, okay. Much more important than looking at cholesterol, which is uh, a non-risk factor. So you don't want to just look at cholesterol to, to try, try to determine if you have a thyroid problem. Just look at the thyroid directly. That's right. All right. All right, let's move on to our next question. So